Shreen Saro's activist career sprang out of a devastating personal experience that unexpectedly changed the course of her life. Two decades ago, on a day like this, her family members arrived at this Kalpitya beach in the Putlam district of Sri Lanka in a fishing boat, after they were forcibly evicted from their village in the neighboring Manar district. Shreen's family was among the nearly 75,000 northern Muslims who were driven out of their homes and villages at gunpoint by the Tamil Tiger rebels in October 1990. Growing up in a war zone, she could not escape the horrors of war which had become part of daily life. But the eviction of her own family was the first time the war really hit home for Shreen. She has converted this personal tragedy into an opportunity to advance the rights and security of women and empower them to become agents of change in a country torn apart by conflict and violence. She was born and raised in Manar in a multi-ethnic neighborhood and completed her primary education in a Catholic convent. At the time of her family's forced displacement, however, Shreen was studying for a business administration degree at the University of Colombo. A few years after her graduation, Shreen decided to visit her native village, embarking on a journey of lifelong commitment to social change and justice. During her visit, Shreen gained first-hand experience to the particular effects that the ongoing armed conflict had on women, and irrespective of their ethnic background, how the women in Manar were waging their own struggles to keep their families alive and safe. On the one hand, the Putalam uh, IDP Muslims were fully covered in order to show that they are a Muslim group of people, identity. And on the other hand, in, in, in uh, Mana, where the Tamil women were asked to produce for a war. So that's when we realized that there is a need for our women to come together as a collective voice to talk about what was happening to them. The group established Mana Women's Development Federation. MWDF, based on the deeply held belief that every woman in society has rights equivalent to any other human being. To date, MWDF remains the only women's organization in the region that provides integrated support services to women whose lives have been blighted by war, violence and abuse. Currently, MWDF works in over 112 villages in the region. The flagship program run by MWDF is its microcredit loan scheme. The facility has enabled over 7,000 war-affected women to develop and sustain viable economic activities. In addition to microcredits, women are given skill development and management training allowing them to enhance their capacity to become economically independent. With a 93% success rate for the revolving loan fund, the organization holds the largest microcredit scheme for women in the northern province. MWDF also runs an empowerment center, providing shelter, safety, free legal advice and income generating skills to victims of sexual abuse and domestic violence based on specific programs that support their individual healing processes. The increased reporting of domestic violence is indicative of legitimacy gained by the center in the eyes of the local women. Shreen's knowledge and experience has been instrumental in making effective changes through advocacy and awareness activities on violence against women. In 2005, Shreen was awarded an Echoing Green Fellowship to build a Tamil Muslim model resettlement village. The process of this project encouraged the two communities to share their experiences of war and created an environment where inter-community peace and reconciliation could be built on. I nominated Shreen for an End Peace Award for many of the reasons that we chose her to be a woman peacemaker at the Institute for Peace and Justice. She was a woman peacemaker in 2004 and 
We chose her because she is doing innovative work in her country of Sri Lanka, um, working on the front lines to address the major issues faced by her people and specifically by women. Her foray into human rights activism began in Putlam, where a majority of the evicted northern Muslim community has settled. In March 2008, Shreen won the Voice of Courage Award from the Women's Commission for Refugee Women and Children in recognition of her work on behalf of displaced communities. Currently, she is nurturing and training a multi-ethnic team of young women to become change agents in their communities in the emergent post-war context. Shreen is very focused on creating the next generation of uh, activists in society, which is something that we don't often find in Sri Lanka, that culture of creating young activists. The concept, peace through development, what I see is if you exclude 50% of the population of this country into the development process, how do we achieve peace? Taking women as part of every step that the government is taking in order to develop this country. It is a must. Uh, and, and that's what I want to see in the future. She enjoys iconic status among the women whose lives she has helped change through mentoring, guidance and economic empowerment. No challenge seems too daunting for Shreen in her determination to realize a society in which women are given equal access to opportunities to accomplish their full potential.